so pretty. <laughs> and months or years of hard work. It's very cool. Hi. Hi. My name is Adam Budinsky. I'm head of product hardware, and I'm responsible for all the products we made as a treasure company. What's the product strategy? What is the feature set? Where do we position this product? How to create a compromise between usability and security. How to be on top of the game with all of the new things that are emerging every day. How do I tell the story of the device? Well, who are we selling this device to? How do we communicate about it? What goes on the packaging? What goes on the product landing page? How to be true to our own vision? How much does it cost? What channels do we activate? Where do we launch it? What do you want to achieve? Why do you want to achieve that? How do I communicate? How to make sure the market, the Bitcoin, display, cheap paperwork, catering. <laughs> what are they going to eat? So you get a black metallic It will be appearance. black and black, but this surface will be glossy and the logo will be matte. That's nice. More subtle. More subtle. Yeah, yeah, okay. As long as we can control the quality of the colour, I want to make sure we get a good colour match between the TPU and the paint. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Sure. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, we were kind of scared because we started at a team of three. We didn't have the experience. Basically, the whole company didn't have experience with Bluetooth device, with a device with battery. So even from point of production and logistics, it was like a challenge from another level. Its complexity is like 10 times bigger than, than the previous model. We had to scale. We had to scale up because uh, otherwise it wouldn't be possible. You had to start somewhere and uh, we were kind of like in this mindset of, let's ship it, let's do it, we will figure it out along the way. Trezor created the industry of hardware wallets and revolutionized self-custody. We strive to be radically transparent and stubbornly secure. And I think the features that you'll find in Trezor Safe 7 actually um, embody that. Two years. Two years ago, oh my God. This is the first concept of the flagship, as a, uh, and as you can see, it's, it's like a metal frame, and it's surrounded by the glass, which is which continues by the USB-C slot to to the backside. This was too risky. So it was kind of like a crazy design at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of question marks. It's concept three, which is kind of like super edgy, let's say. Then there's concept four. So it's like a. <laughs> I'm not sure what, but it's, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's keep that. Uh, concept, concept five, which was like all glass surface from from mm. the front surface, and uh, yeah, uh, pretty much everything changed uh, since then. I think we both, with Adam, like strive for the best because we are creating the devices for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, definitely, we were thinking much more about ourselves because we consider like ourselves to be like the yeah like biggest users of Trezor, let's say. Uh, and to make a good product for you means that you will make a good product for basically everyone. So after approving what's, what will be the final form factor, you have to do the, like the detailed design. So basically where you're fitting the PCB, where the battery will be, where the button will be, because also you can see that previous version didn't even have the button. Yeah, and this is uh, basically step by step of the production process of the aluminum body from the aluminum bar or aluminum block, let's say. And then the hard part is this one, actually. We approached like four different vendors and no one wanted to produce those. Because they told us it's like super expensive, it will take a lot of time. And some, some says that it's even impossible. But Adam came with the idea. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How to do that? Yeah, the idea where you mill 
the internals from the USB-C slot. And actually one unibody is taking like two hours to make. You need to find a sweet spot uh, between business slash money, security slash open source and usability. You want the best components available for the lowest price. For example, had more powerful chips inside that could uh, run uh, the great display that we that we that we have much smoother. But uh, for example, the library that enables that uh, wasn't open source. Where we started designing Treasure Safe 7, the Tropic chip didn't even exist. The development of both things were going kind of in parallel. Usually when you are designing a device, you know, all the chips are already on the market and you are just picking the right one. We reserved a space on a PCB where the Tropic could fit. We, we were kind of like, you know, crossed our fingers and we were hoping for the best. Hey guys, Tropic 01 is a secure element chip and the purpose of it is to challenge the status quo of perception of security as an obscure game that should be hiding behind secrets and certificates and contracts. The mindset of a security should be an infinite game seen as a game of constant improvements and just being open basically to any kind of feedback. We don't compromise security. We don't compromise transparency. And we would rather wait and be late to the game, take our time to figure it out, be the innovators, than ship something quick that we aren't confident about, that we aren't sure that this is truly transparent or this is truly open source. We were really hoping that the Tropic uh, team will deliver, and they did. So that's why, uh, that's how we fill the space. Uh, we actually have the Tropic inside, and I think it's a game changer. It's actually like first hardware wallet with uh, open secure element. And yeah, that's a big thing. It's basically the first auditable secure element on the market that's commercially available. But the main digital design logic of Tropico One is published on our GitHub, including the RTL code, which is the source code of a chip, the firmware, also including the SDK and documentation. Where it gets interesting is that once you publish the digital design logic, that's where you can collect the feedback and criticism and bug vulnerability fi findings from the community and from independent testers. And that's through which we will make the chip ultimately the most secure as possible. Currently, already as we speak, the chip is being attacked and uh, tested and evaluated by one of the top pen testing labs in the world. If you would have a closed source device, that would display a transaction that you should sign. You don't know if the transaction you saw, it's the transaction you, you actually signed. But if you are open source, you 100% know that what you see is what you sign. And this is what we are doing here. Even though I don't understand uh, like any code, uh, for me, having an open source device means that I can trust the device and especially hardware wallet, which can hold all of your assets, basically. For me, when I look at any piece of technology or anything for that matter, I really care about uh, that visual experience around it. 
So with uh, Trezor Safe 7, the pattern really stands out to me. No, I think it was... Uh... Yeah, man. It it's, it's, like... it's like turning up my PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> The journey with patterns took like six months with all the de designers, the whole team, the sea level, everything was involved. I think we spent like months discussing what the final thing would be. The patterns would be made through specific angles of the device. And we thought that was it. All of us put our bets on, this is it, this is going to be it. And it wasn't it at all. We were like, oh, but th that's changing the brand completely. You can see it probably even like here, because the pattern is now everywhere. It can change everything. It wasn't just another design. We'll use this for years. We take this story of the pattern and give it life throughout the product. Of course, you see it on the device, but it also comes through in the packaging. Then we bring it to life in storytelling, be it the product video, be it visuals that you'll eventually see on social media. Our industrial designer came up with this idea where on actual cash money, you have small patterns. He found out some like open, open source project where you basically can type some numbers into some formulas and it will generate a pattern for you that's really hard to replicate. The color is actually a result of metal vaporizing on the glass in 14 layers. You really have this like huge chamber. You have this big umbrella where you stick transparent glass. You have a small pieces of metal which you will drop on the bottom of the chamber. And then you close the chamber, you will vaporize it to, to the glass in 14 layers. And if you change just one layer, the color will be shifted to something else. I did not imagine that on the beginning. I just think we just sprayed with some color and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it turns out to be more complex. We were with Hans collaborating more of the feature spec, like what it should do and what it shouldn't do. Of course, the, the rest of it, there's a huge team in a company that's, that's doing, that's making this possible. It's definitely not just to us. You know there's hardware that's worked on it. You know there's software that's worked on it, be it uh, firmware or suite. Then you know there's engineering work that goes into it, there's production work that goes into it, and marketing. But then there's so much great work being done in the background by a lot of other teams that aren't so obvious. An example would be UX research, support and community. Then you have logistics, technical writers. Yeah, with, with design, with you know support on the project management side, product management side, on a firmware, uh, on an engineering level. I haven't seen that in any of the companies I've worked in the past. That level of uh, commitment to making this happen. It's just true, I mean, these guys are amazing. <laughs> Users can sleep nicely yeah, in the night, uh, knowing that they are safe here. People from the industry are not believing how something like this was possible. It's the first kind of glimpse of new future. I'm actually very excited, very proud of all the teams that worked on it, because there's nothing like it. I think the thing that we did it, that's the thing what I love about it. I will probably take a long time in a vacation somewhere. Uh, 
I don't know. I will not speak to anyone for a week. <laughs> I will be super proud, yeah. Thank you.